damage that, of course, without a doubt, will define whether or not this Audi can even be fixed. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Ed Gasket. If you're new here, you picked a good video to start on because we're going to disassemble this 2008 Audi R8 that I revealed in the last video. Now we have to get right to work because as you can see, there's plenty of work to be done on this Audi R8. First things first, we need to figure out why that wheel looks like it belongs on a 2008 Honda Civic with one of these logos on the back window. Even he doesn't like it. Uh. The second goal in this video is to identify which parts we're going to need for our rebuild, where we will source them, because you'll see that is a challenge with this type of car. Most importantly, what it's going to cost to obtain those parts. And lastly, really interesting to me, because of course I had to buy this thing, but probably equally interesting to you, is what happened to this Audi R8? Why does it look this way? Because we did figure that out. I did already drive our car up onto 2x4s to give us enough space just to look underneath the vehicle to understand how to jack this car up into the air. In line with the door handle, but underneath the vehicle, there is one small area that's designated to take the entire weight of the vehicle. You can see that area is right here. The only issue is it's cylindrical in nature, so you cannot fit a regular jack stand up under this position. And of course, a floor jack has this fitting on it, so I don't know how this would ever help us. So we're gonna have to find an alternative way to jack up this vehicle. The goal is, to get that back wheel off because I don't think we'll be able to take any of these parts off of the vehicle without first doing that. So that's a really interesting type of fitting to put on the end of a floor jack and I don't know any floor jack that comes with that cylindrical end on it. Of course the whole purpose of that cylindrical end was so that you could use Audi's jack, the one that came with the car. So if you look in the underside of the frunk, you'll remember that there's a whole bunch of tire changing equipment in here. Now what you'll quickly learn is that there's no jack available. There is of course a position for your jack to sit, but in our case, no jack exists. Now it's not because our jack is missing or stolen, it's because Audi stopped putting jacks in the car. What good would a jack be in a car that doesn't come with a spare tire? It does of course come with a bottle of pressurized tire sealant to hopefully fix your flat tire before you would need to change it. This of course is the tire inflation system that also comes in the R8. I would like to film now. I'm going to use a hockey puck to jack this vehicle up in the air. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. That way we can safely lift this vehicle up, remove that rear tire, and begin disassembling our Audi R8. He's really interested in the R8. So guys, the obvious damage that totaled our vehicle on the outside would be the quarter panel, the lower quarter panel, the side blade, and of course the rear bumper and all the small pieces associated that cost a lot of money, that offsets the value of the vehicle, and it gets totaled. But there's more to the story as always. So now that the wheel is off and the fender liner is out, we have a direct look at the significant damage to the suspension and the frame. Damage that, of course, without a doubt, will define whether or not this Audi can even be fixed. Here's a closer look. That is the rotor. This is the control arm. And where the control arm mounts to the frame, you can see in the back there is totally cracked. On the opposite side, more of the same. That segment of the frame is called a cross member. And to buy that, you have to be a certified aluminum Audi technician. So we're going to have to find an alternative because we are definitely not a certified Audi electrician. Technician? 
Now, if you're wondering how this could have happened, the answer lies right here in this color. If you look close, it's red. And the reason it's red is because our 2008 Audi R8 was in a major collision with a fire truck. So I've been in contact with the person who owned this car when it was in the collision with the fire truck, and we will do our best to make sure we maintain the privacy of that individual. I'd like to make that clear. There was an Audi R8 on the right, a fire truck on the left, and at some point, those two entities became one with a fair amount of energy behind what looks like the fire truck. So the number one question and concern is, was everyone okay inside of the Audi R8? The number two question or concern, was everyone okay in the fire truck? And the last question, was everybody okay who was in the fire, who needed the fire truck? Of course, I don't have 100% confirmation of all of these burning questions. That wasn't right. But I have reason to believe that everyone is okay in general. So I've been in contact with the previous owner of this R8 and the owner before that person. And both of these people have been incredibly kind and helpful in offering all the information I need to get this car back on the road. So thank you guys so much. So even the people who do not have a special interest in this car, people who may own an R8 or work on them professionally, have offered so much valuable information in such a kind way that I cannot speak any higher about a group of people than I can the R8 folks. Kinder than the three-wheeler people, kinder than the Jeep Wrangler people or the 911 people. I'm telling you, the people who care about these cars are some of the kindest people I've met to date. So a special thanks to everybody on the internet and in real life who will have a hand in bringing this car back to life. Yes, those are wooden blocks under the tires. Trust me, it's safe. Let's go ahead and take apart the rear end of this vehicle so we can get complete access to that area that is keeping me up at night. Well, that was a little overwhelming. A lot of nuts and bolts hold this thing together, but it's nice that it's not welded together like a traditional car. So really just a whole bunch of Torx bolts and this thing came all apart, giving us great access to this damaged area where we can see the cross member is completely beyond repair. So I'm thinking we'll keep the suspension together for now. I can see exactly what I need to order in terms of parts that need to be replaced, but it might be best if we can put a wheel back on this and then take it to somebody who knows how to weld better than I do, because that cross member is gonna need the skill of a more practiced hand, and I think I know just the person. So I need to order a whole bunch of parts. A lot of things that were broken in the accident, some things that may have been broken upon disassembly, but for the most part, these things have to come from Germany. So I wanna get inside on the computer, order everything so that I can be here as soon as possible. If you're sick of hearing about shipping delays related to the pandemic, then you probably shouldn't buy a German vehicle right now, but we're gonna do our best. So I've already ordered many parts for the R8. Some of them are here, some of them are in transit. Others need to be ordered later today based on what we found in our dismantling process. Of course, we have a lot of work cut out for us. So far, so good, no real surprises, minus that little caveat where we had catastrophic frame damage. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to getting this thing back on the road. I hope you are too, because this does not deserve to look the way that it does right now. If you want to catch more content like what you saw today, where we get this R8 back in running condition, be sure to subscribe to Ed Gasket. Hit up Ed Gasket Garage on Instagram if you want to see updates on the vehicle between YouTube videos. Otherwise, if you need us between now and the next one, you can imagine we will be somewhere within the vicinity of this area right here in the garage. <laughs>